Hello, folks. Um, the internet abounds with these websites that expose, claim to expose preachers, like here, the truth about Jack Hiles. So what I want to do is, um, I mean, there's just too many of them to respond to, but this one came up and I know Jack Hiles has a particular message called Let's Go So Winning, where he gives a specific example of um, what he taught about going soul winning. So I'll use that to answer this particular um, blog article. So this guy claims he's giving two examples of uh, soul winning by Jack Kyles. Apparently Jack Kyles gave some elevator example and some stoplight example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you Jack Kyle's, what he presented as his definitive example of what he thought uh, how soul winning should be. Like here the guy says, um, Hylesism makes soul winning into a contest in which those who claim to be Christians turn into competitors who don't take their time to explain the gospel clearly. So let's see how Jack Hiles explained uh, to share the gospel. Apparently, he claims why wasn't he preaching the blood and uh, that Jack Hiles preaching a bloodless gospel. So uh, we, we're going to see that too. Um, you know, he emphasizes faith and blood. Let's see, uh, let's look at Jack Hiles' message. Oh, and this guy says he's going to win souls the Bible way, not the Hiles way. Let's see if um, Jack Hiles did it, you know, the Bible way or not. This personal Savior. We're going to relive this experience and show you exactly the methods used and the plan offered to Doug and show you the exact experience of his salvation. Now, to be sure, we have forgotten many of the minute details, but we hope to relive it so as to show you exactly how to win a soul to Jesus Christ. I would like to spend one hour with you trying to... ...outside of my own family who has my name. And so now let's discuss for a few moments this important subject of soul winning. I'm going to ask you to use your... And now we turn to my friend Doug Hiles. Not related by blood, but related by the blood of Jesus Christ. Doug and Kathy are with me today. On October the 1st, 1900, she invited me in. Finding that Doug was not a Christian, I opened the Bible and began to explain to Doug what it means to become a child of God. In a few moments, Doug was saved. And briefly relive this experience. To be sure, we cannot spend as much time as we did that evening on October the 1st, 1960. But we will give you an abbreviated picture of the experience that we um, enjoy. Mrs. Hiles, uh, I understand you were in our services recently, is this right? Yes, Wednesday, uh, Sunday and Wednesday. Oh, wonderful, yes. wonderful. And uh, then you feel that a person cannot know that he's saved until he dies, is this true? Yes. Let me ask you this, Doug. Suppose that I could show you in the Bible how you could know that if you died, you would go to heaven. And then you could see that a person could know. If you could see it and see what to do, would you do it? Yes, I, I believe I would if I could agree with you on that point. In other words, if you could agree that <laughs> the Bible does teach you can know, then you would do it. Yes. Of course, 1 John 5, 13 says, um, These things that are written unto you that believe on the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. But I want to go a little further into it. Then you would, if you could see what to do, and you could agree with me on it, what the Bible teaches, you would do it if you knew what yes, to do. Yes, if I knew. Wonderful. There are only four things that you have to know to go to heaven. The Bible says, so now then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so you're right. A person should investigate in the word of God what they should do in order to be a Christian. The first thing that you have to know is that you are a sinner. Let me show you here in the Bible, Doug, in Romans chapter 3, 
and verse 10. I want you to notice this first thing I mentioned, that we must know that we're sinners if we go to heaven. You see it right here? Romans 3 and verse 10. As it is written, there is none righteous. Righteous, that's right. No, not one. You see that? Yes. Now, this entire third chapter of Romans tells us the condition of the heart of man. Look at the last part of verse 12. You'll find there is none that doeth good. Good, right. None that doeth good. No, not one. In verse 23, it sums up the entire chapter by saying, for what? All have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the what? Glory of God. Glory of God. Now, what this teaches, Doug, is that all of us are by nature sinners. If there is none righteous, that means I'm not righteous, doesn't it? Yes. And if there's none righteous, that means Kathy is not righteous. Of course, you know she's not righteous already. <laughs> but that means that she's not righteous. Now, that means if there is none righteous, that means that Doug Piles is not righteous, doesn't it? Yes, sir. All right. Then if all have sinned, that means that Jack Hiles has sinned. And that means that Kathy Hiles has sinned. And Doug Hiles has sinned. For all of us have sinned. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. So the first thing we know is that every person is by nature a sinner. And there is none righteous. The second thing you have to know, Doug, to become a Christian is that God has placed a, placed a price on sin. All of us are sinners. There's a price that must be paid. And that price is found in chapter 5. And verse 12, where it says, notice, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and what by sin, Doug? Death. Death by sin. And so, what? Death. Death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. About the same thing is said in chapter 6 and verse 23, where it says, For the wages of sin is death. Death. Right. All right. We find then that all of us are sinners, and we find that God has placed a price on this sin, and this price is death. Here's what it means. God made a man and he made a woman. He put them in the Garden of Eden. And he said, you can eat of every tree in this garden but one. And that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve, you cannot eat of this tree. If you do, you're going to die. They did eat the tree. You remember that? The Catholics believe that. And the Methodists believe that. And the Baptists believe that. So they did eat of this tree. When they did, they died. They did not drop dead physically. It was first a spiritual death. Though the curse of physical death did come upon man, immediately he ran from God and was separated from God, which means that he died spiritually. If a man lives without God, he has to die without God. If a person dies without God, he has to live in eternity without God, which is called hell, which means, Doug, in the final analysis, sin takes us to hell. The first thing we noticed that a person is a sinner. And the second thing, there's a price on sin. And that price is death, which ultimately will take the person to hell. Do you understand that? Yes. That's the second thing. Now, so far in our story, <coughs> I'm a sinner and you're a sinner. Is this true? Yes. And so far in our story, I'm going to hell and you're going to hell. Is this not true? Yes. The third thing, Doug, that you have to know is found in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. And that is that God has paid the price for us already. Look at chapter 5 and verse 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ what? Died for Died us. Died for us. Now, Doug, what is the wages of sin? Death. Death. What did Christ do for us? Died for us. Right. That means that whatever sin cost, Jesus paid. Does it not? Yes. All right. Then we are sinners and the wages of sin is death. That's separation from God. Jesus died for us, which means that Jesus has paid the price for our sins. God sent his only begotten son into the world. He was God in the flesh. He was virgin born, lived a perfect life. He himself never sinned, so he himself did not have to go to hell, did he? No. But when he'd been here for 33 years, he went to the cross. And on the cross, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Which means he was paying the price for your sin. He was your substitute, your sacrifice, paying your price for sin. Do you understand that, Doug? Yes. Now, Doug, the fourth thing you have to know is that if we will put our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior, God will see that faith and count it for righteousness, transferring all of our sins to Jesus and imputing his righteousness to us, which means that the moment that you put your faith in Jesus Christ, God sees Jesus with your sins and sees you with his goodness. 
Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing today to know that every sin was forgiven? Yes, it would. I know but it would. Faith is a, is a big word. I mean, it takes in uh, quite a scope. Yes, uh, it does. You have to, uh, you have to live uh, according uh, to the Old Testament and the Ten Commandments and things like this to... Uh, uh, live a good life too. Uh, well, I think that it's heaven. admirable that you want to live a good life, and I think that a person that is saved should want to live a good life. But the thing that happens when you're saved is God gives you His Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes in you to live, and He lives through you the Christian life. He is the babysitter, He takes care of you. Now, we cannot keep the commandments or even live a good life unless we have God's help. And so a person must be first born again. Receiving Christ by faith, and when our faith is placed in Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in us to live. And then He lives through us and works through us and lets us live the kind of life we ought to live. But it is a faith that makes us God's child. Now, Doug, let me ask you this. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. That's the way you do righteousness, believing. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You see that? Yes. Doug, let me ask you a question. Do you realize today that you are a sinner? Yes, I do. Do you realize that because we are sinners, that there's a price on sin, which means that if you died tonight, you would go to hell? you realize that? Yes, I do. Doug, that's a very serious matter. Kathy is a Christian, and you are not a Christian. If your apartment were to burn tonight, and both of you go out into eternity, Kathy would go to heaven, and you would go to hell. You would never see her again. That scares me, Doug. Do you believe, Doug, that Jesus Christ took your sins and died for you on the cross that you might have eternal life? Yes, I do. Do you believe that if you would be willing tonight to bow your head and say, God, the best I know how I am trusting Christ in faith as my Savior, and this moment I, I receive him, do you believe that God would take you to heaven if you'd mean that? Oh, I think he would. He sure would. Doug, let's bow our heads and have a prayer. Let me pray that you'd do it tonight. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes. Our Heavenly Father, I am so grateful that Doug has heard the gospel. Here's a young couple starting out together. They have all of their life ahead of them. But more than that, all of eternity stretches out before them. Here's Kathy. She's a Christian. She's going to heaven. Here's Doug. He needs to be a Christian. I pray tonight that he will say yes to Jesus Christ. Doug, while our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I'm going to ask you to do something that God will help you to do. I'm going to ask you to talk to God in your own words and ask God to forgive you and tell him tonight you are receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior. Go ahead and do it, Doug. God will help you. Go ahead and pray out loud right now. I hope you will. I hope you will. Go ahead. Well, Doug, maybe it's a little hard for you to pray. and Maybe you can't think of the words. I'm going to ask you then to repeat after me this prayer if you mean it with all of your heart. And you do tonight want to receive the Savior. I'm going to ask you to say to God from your heart now, Dear Lord, Forgive my sins. Dear Lord, forgive my sins. And save my soul. And save my soul. Be merciful to me, a sinner. Be merciful to me, a sinner. I do now receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. I do now receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. And I trust Him to take me to heaven when I die. And I trust Him to take me to heaven when I die. Doug, while our heads are bowed, if you meant that prayer... And you did receive Christ as your Savior and are making this the hour of hours in your life. I'm going to ask you as a token of it, man to man, to take my hand. Amen. God bless you. Our Heavenly Father, I'm so glad that Doug has received Christ tonight. I'm glad that he by faith has turned to the Savior. I pray now that you'll help him to realize that if he's been sincere, that his faith has been counted for righteousness. And he's your child. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Doug. Now, let me ask you a question, Doug. Over here in the Gospel of John, in the third chapter, one of the greatest chapters in all the Bible, I want you to see this verse. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. 
Doug, are you believing on the Son of God tonight? Yes, I am. According to that <clears throat> verse, where would you go if you died tonight? Well, I, I'd go to heaven right. according to the verse. Because the Bible says it. Mm -hmm. And that's your hope for heaven. Then Doug turned to Kathy and said, Kathy, I just became a Christian. I just became a Christian. Isn't that wonderful? Yes, that's wonderful. <clears throat> God bless you, Doug. Now, Doug, now that you've received Christ as your Savior, the next thing you ought to do is come to the services. And let me tell the people that you have received him. You, it does not mean necessarily that you're joining the church. It simply means that you're telling the whole world that you are a Christian. Would you be willing to come Sunday to the services? And when the invitation is given at the close of the service, would you be willing to come forward and let me tell the people what's happened in your home today? I believe we could do that. Wonderful. Would you promise God that? Well, yes, I yes, I will. Let's bow our heads, Doug. Would you just say this prayer? Say, dear Lord. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I do promise. I do promise that I will come forward. That I will come forward at First Baptist Church of Hammond. At First Baptist Church of Hammond next Sunday morning. Next Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Doug. I'll be going. I have a deacons meeting. I'm a little late. Oh. I hope they don't vote to fire me before I get there. So nice to have met you, and oh. Kathy, such a joy to meet you. And nice. God bless you, and I'll see you Sunday morning. Bye.